All right, family, peace and black power. Welcome to another edition of Baba TV, Every Time Fire. And this is the brother, this is the brother from Buffalo, Brother Shango. And shout out to Brother Seville. Brother Seville knows this brother very well. And uh, you don't see this brother on YouTube very much, but he's in the community. And I, I'm not going to talk too much about him. I'll let him do that. But he does the work in Buffalo. Has been in the community for a long, long time. He has a grandmother that I would like for him to speak about that most of you all know once he delves into who she is. But uh, Brother Shango, just going to talk to the people. Hotep. Hotep. Uh, uh, Black Power. Hotep. Peace and love. Um, shalom. Uh, Lafayette, all of that. Um, I want to first uh, get permission from my elder to speak. Baba is my elder, so uh, he's blessed me to continue with this information. Um, I want to thank, this is my son. You know, I always give blessings to my son. He's my right hand, you know what I mean? In fact, I think that uh, a lot of us is missing that within this conscious community, the, the family aspect of this movement. You know, so I try to show that all the time. Um, I'm really blessed that Baba, you know, from Syracuse to Buffalo, spend those hours, you know, coming to uh, interview little old me. You know, you know, I'm just a uh, small fish in the big pond. I don't profess myself to have more information than any the next man. You know, I'm a good teacher, but I'm a better student. You know what I mean? So when I learn to, when elders are speaking, I, I listen. You know what I'm saying? When I'm not being spoken to, I be quiet. You know what I mean? When I'm asked questions, I elaborate the best way I know how. You know, and I think that that um, concept of us, of our being, is kind of lost. You know, so I'm happy that Baba came out here to uh, just get my perspective on what's going on in the uh, black community or what's going on in the so-called conscious community and whatnot. Um, I'm blessed to be here with one of the, um, I mean, what can I say? You know what I'm saying? One of the, one of the giants of Buffalo. You know, uh, we're still waiting on somebody as big as Rick to, 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 to bring light to Buffalo. Buffalo has become one of the forgotten cities. In fact, there's a DVD that's called The Forgotten Cities. There's so much history and so much that we should know that comes out the city of Buffalo that we don't um, elaborate. Um, Buffalo is the last stop of the Underground Railroad. So if we go down a little further down here, you know what I'm saying, we'll see what we call Broderick Park. Roderick Park is connected to Niagara Falls. This is where our ancestors walked over to what we call freedom, or what they call uh, uh, um, um, Canada. Um, if you also, if you go see, you'll see that we have a Nile Valley right here. A lot of us don't have to go to Egypt to experience that river. We can go right here because the same water that exists in Egypt will one day pass here. So there's nothing new under the sun. Everything's been done. Um, again, I'd just like to take the opportunity to uh, thank Bible for coming out here and interviewing me. You know, we we about to have a, a good build, you know, especially on Brother Rick. You know, how do we um, connect consciousness and Rick James? You know, how, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we have to do is go back to the beginning. And the beginning is to know where it all began, you know, where legacy or where consciousness all begins, you know. Um, if we're going to speak on Rick and then the impact that Rick brought to Buffalo, Rick is still a symbolism of what can come out of this city. You know, this city doesn't have too much uh, value coming out of it. You know, we have sort of like uh, pipe dreams, right? But with Rick, this is a testimony of us that that lets us know we can make it you know any one of us can make it there's stories there's elders that that's from this city that talks about rick james still to this day i didn't heard some of the funniest stories about rick james one of the stories i've heard was how rick james um you know rick james mother was a hustler she worked for the buffalo mob here you know what I mean? She was a numbers runner and, and amongst other things. We're not going to put her business out there, but amongst other things, you know, um, in this city, you almost have to do what you have to do to survive. So I understand that life. But uh, Rick was fortunate to uh, go to Canada 
to um, really develop his craft and develop his music. Once Rick got on, there's a story told about how his mama, you know, was messing with this young boy over there on Jefferson. Now, um, the elders explained that all they can do is see Rick in these high, these pink boots and this 25 running after this young boy, you know what I mean, shooting at him. So in, in retrospect, real, Rick was a real dude, you know what I mean? He never let the fame, you know what I'm saying, um, allow him to forget where he came from. You know, Rick always came back to the, to the community. Um, in fact, Rick put people on from the community. I can't, we can't talk about Rick without talking about the Mary Jane girls and the do rags. I'm from Buffalo. I know, I got to know my history. You know what I'm saying? So these are the people that came out of that Rick James legacy. You know, even put a little white girl on named Tina Marie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sound, sound like a sister, but she was white. You know what I mean? But this is Rick, man. And my son. You know, is following into that singing footsteps or that, you know, being a, um, a one who gets through to people via music. You know, now that, you know, we're talking about music, we have to talk about, you know, um, some of the vibrations and some of the tones that this man was able to tap into to give us that good feeling that we got whenever the songs came on, whenever, you know, Rick music was being played. There's another story about Rick being in a pool hall. Rick is stunting at this time. He's throwing up money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You niggas ain't got no money, more money than me. This was Rick. You know what I'm saying? So I heard somebody got offended and punched Rick James in the face. Yeah, punched him in the face, dead in the face. So Rick leave, and all of a sudden he come back, and they said it's something like the movie. Rick standing there with five Italian dudes with guns, <laughs> talking about what is it now? What is it now? You know what I mean? Police was called and everybody dispersed. But this was some of the Rick James stories. Uh, one of the best jewelers from Buffalo is is named Baba Amin Ra Patah Hotep M Hotep. And he was fortunate enough to actually grow up with Rick James. This is my elder. Um, the stories that he have of Rick is just is just awesome because he lived that. Uh, he told me, um, he asked Rick James one time, what he do with his first million? Rick James said he put it up his nose. You know what I'm saying? Um, my Baba was a jeweler. And he will often make these rare pieces for Brother Rick. And the one thing that my Baba always expressed that the fact that Rick will always give these people pieces to other people. Now, I understand both perspective. When you're a creator, you want to see your creation being valued. So every time he gave Rick a piece and he noticed that Rick didn't have the piece, he felt like his creation was being devalued. But on Rick and Rick was blessed to give somebody a piece of item that only exists once one time in the world. We have an old basketball player named Bob Lanier. You know, he used to play NBA in the, back in the day. And we, yeah, yeah, and we still got a Bob Lanier program, you know. And these are the things, these are what you're supposed to do when you, when you develop a legacy. You're supposed to always leave your legacy. When I pass on. They're supposed to ask me, am I satisfied with the things that I left here? And I'm supposed to be at peace with that. If you're asked if you're satisfied with the things that you have left and you're not, then you got something to do. You know what I'm saying? We got a little more work to do. You know what I mean? But what can I say? We from Buffalo. Rick was from Buffalo. You know, and no matter what I know and no matter where I go, you know what I'm saying? I'm never going to forget the city that I'm from, you know what I mean? The city is like a gift and a curse at the same time, you know. One minute you can't stand it, the next minute you love being a part of it, you know what I mean? So, this is that's just my, my piece on Rick. Um, I've heard so many stories on Rick trying to think about all the stories is kind of kind of difficult. So, what we're going to do is we'll, try play, we'll come back, you know what I mean, with a Rick James story. You know, but again, though, this man is a, is a living legend. And most of the schools here in Buffalo, you see Rick James' face. Rick James got a monument in your school, right? He got a plaque, right? Yeah, yeah he got a plaque, right? The, the brother who uh, did music 
was the music teacher work with Rick and he made sure that Rick got a plaque in his school you know so Rick is is larger than life still to this day man you know what I mean and, and to just think that he came out of these four walls you know gives us gives me hopes and aspiration as you know my son win the next Apollo you know event yes 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 you in fact I'm gonna let him talk about it introduce yourself who, who is you <laughs> all right may I have permission all right um all right um I'm I'm Lawrence Prince uh I won the first round of the Apollo down in New York the second round um a uh, little girl about my age she she got the best of me in my song yeah but um yeah it's just it was just a great experience to be at the Apollo, an experience like standing on a stage that icons like um, Rick James, Michael Jackson, um, Patti LaVelle, like all, all of them just to be standing on the same stage they were standing on when, when I was like, I wasn't even born yet, but yeah, just that was a blessing and I like, and uh... Who were some of your heroes? Tell them who some uh, of your heroes. Well, some of my um, conscious heroes was people like uh, Huey P. Newton. Um, Malcolm X, uh, Harriet Tubman, Ida B. Wales, uh, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, um, Elijah Muhammad, Khaled Muhammad, uh, who else, who else? Uh, Tupac, Biggie, <laughs> yeah, and... So tell them what you got going, um, what you doing right now in school? Well, school, well, I'm learning. I'm learning my grades and um, I'm hoping, like I've been slacking, like, I mean, I am a kid, I'm doing kid things, like playing the game and all, but um, like, as my dad said, after he passed, um, after he passed, um, it's going to be relying on me to keep his legacy and keep that Comet Flix and um, his sales to keep it going and just keep it, keep the conscious in my powers if he passed. I should, I should, I should, I go put you in the spot, I should, yes, yes sir, um, my son uh, mentioned Kef uh, Cometflix. Cometflix is a platform that we kind of both work on. Uh, it's a subscription-based website that brings on a lot of that old teaching. You know, that old Dr. Ben's, old Shashi McIntyre's, uh, um, you, um, you name it, Wade Nobles. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Leonard Jeffries. We got them all. Um, I can't speak about my website without first speaking about my grandmother who made the website possible. Um, I come from a, a line of conscious people and really didn't know what consciousness was even in my youth stage. But when I was able to recognize it, I was able to recognize the greater, the better men in all people, especially um, my grandmother Bert. My grandmother, Bert Lockett, was from um, Buffalo, New York, of course, and I put her on the same pedestal as Rick James. Um, Bert Lockett uh, was from Buffalo, New York, and she pretty much was one of the ones who pioneered the videography world. Before there was the Sonettas and the um, Brother Simons and, you know, all the other good people who do hard work to put out this information. There was Clemson Browns, there was Sister Burton, and there was numerous other people who was doing the due diligence to keep this information on. Um, before, at that time, it wasn't DVDs, it was VCR tapes. You know, so these people were working in real time to um, make sure that these uh, information was being distributed. Well, my grandmother, and being so consistent in what she was doing, managed to collect a large collection of conscious information, tapes, VCR tapes, uh, audio tapes, um, 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 DVDs, you know, and I'm now walking in her footsteps, so I have to now do best with, with this information. Um, Sister Burt was just a legend. If you look her up, Burt Lockett, she's in the actual DJ Hall of Fame. Um, she gets to New York City in the 60s and wants to become an inspired DJ. Uh, she gets jobs for people. She, she actually worked for people like Davy Crockett in New York City. She worked for uh, Flo Kennedy. In, um, in New York City, she actually had a job at Studio 54 where she got fired, you know. So this lady have been all throughout New York City making her mark. You know, 
it's not the people that's known that we really look to. It's the people that's unknown that we really look to. But because they unknown, we don't know enough to know that they exist. When we look at the Harriet Tubman, she wasn't the only one. We just honored the sister because she was the more popular one. You know what I mean? The Ida B. Wells, all of these people don't get mentioned. You know what I mean? And these people are not rolling in their graves because they don't didn't get mentioned. The work was done. You know, so when you put in the work, you know what I'm saying? The the limelight you get out of it shouldn't matter because the work is being put in. And this is what Sister Burt was. You know, she was the one who discovered Bobby Hammond. In retrospect, my mother, my grandmother is the mother of metaphysical information. She's the mother of metaphysics. When you think of Azariah, or when you think of uh, Phil Valentine, when you think of uh, uh, Bobby Hammond, you know, uh, Henry D. Bernardo, you know, you know, all of them, you know, all know my grandmother and recognize the work that she put in. What happens is there's generations that goes on, right? And people passes, people legacy get passed on. And I'm just one of the ones who carrying on that legacy to make sure that the information in its purest form get out there. You know what I'm saying? So if you tired of the pseudoism, if you tired of the confusion, if you tired of just not knowing what was before now, then you can always go to cometflix.com, sign up for a subscription, and get all of that. You know, um, the website do provide free um, vegan recipes. We got free conscious music whenever there's an artist who wants to get his music out. Uh, my website is the perfect platform to get it out because it's what it's going to do is just draw a whole abundance of people who either looking for information or who's already into the information. You see what I'm saying? So I think the purpose in life is to do what we have and make sure that what we have with what we doing works well. One of my babas used to say that we should always look at things and say how do it how can I make this work for me? And I think that we don't do that enough in this community. We let things pass. You know, it wasn't easy getting my grandmother's material she didn't make it easy she didn't just say here i'm gonna give this to you i had to let her know that i was worthy enough to, to take on this mission and i think that whenever you have an elder and you're missed you should always constantly let your elder elder know that you're worthy enough to even be a pupil in his midst when i see dr leonard jeffries i shut up i become the student you know, when I see any one of my family in ASCAT, I shut up and become the student and learn and sit at the feet of our masters. Shout out to Brother Reggie. You know, I love the, the work that Brother Reggie has been doing over the years with ASCAT. He's the, he's the first one I connected with in ASCAT when I got to ASCAT. So, you know, I want to definitely shout out to Brother Reggie. I think that Brother Reggie is like one of those people who do great work behind the scene that don't get the respect that's due. You know what I mean? And that's okay though. You know what I'm saying? Because only, we, you, you remember what they say in the street, Bob? They say real recognize real, right? You know what I'm saying? So I, what I got to say to Brother Reggie, man, forget what these fake people think. You know what I'm saying? Understand the real G's or the real ones out here recognizing the work that you putting in. You know what I'm saying? So shout outs to Brother Reggie and everybody who don't get that Sonetta light. You know what I'm saying? Who's doing work in the community who don't get get that lime like they need it. You know what I mean? But, it's, you know, it, what can you do in this world? You keep it trucking. You know, a lot of us get caught up into social media limelights and you know it clicks and hits and all of that you know a lot of us came from an era era where you didn't even have that you know what i'm saying all you had was you know your own intuition dr dr ben went blind spending hours in libraries reading in dark in the dark to get us the information that we need now we in a push button society you know and we can ask anybody anything any question at the uh, um at the push of a button you know so i'm old school with this i i uh honor and appreciate the hard work and ethics behind putting out real information you know information that can be backed up 
the greatest thing that Dr. Ben taught or Dr. Clark taught me was anything that you read should have footnotes in it. You should have a point of reference. And I'm saying that to say that anybody that you listen to should be just a footnote. Or reference towards real information you know if they telling you something then they should have some type of receipt to prove what they're telling you you know some type of proof of burden you know and this is the like this is the line that I come up I don't I'm not on YouTube all the time because of that you know what I mean people get uh, yeah drunk off the madness right <laughs> they get a couple thousand views on their first hit and now they have to outdo their, their first video. Not realizing their first video was just luck. You know what I'm saying? So I don't get myself caught up in that. I think my best work is what Baba experienced today and is working with these babies. You know what I'm saying? Teaching these babies that uh, they got a legacy. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's far older than they can ever imagine. You know, I think our real work should be with these babies. I think we do enough teaching and enough tutoring to grown-ass people who's just going to stuck in their ways in the first place. You see what I'm saying? How do we get him to become a Dr. Ben? How do we be, uh, get him to become a Dr. Clark? Because him to become a Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. You know, so those would be my focus. That's my focus. You know, um, I'm, lo I'm looking at... Uh, uh, People who's developing real schools, you know what I'm saying? People who's, you know, just taking, you know, uh, space and time out their houses, out their homes to give proper information. Here in Buffalo, we do a, a conscious workshop every Monday. The conscious workshop been going since 1990, and of course, that's longer than I've been a part of it. But I've been snatched up by elders who put me on that path and taking over the conscious workshop. So now I run the conscious workshop. I do all the, you know, the plannings and, you know, all the, um, the filming and out of what we do every Monday. And I, I couldn't have done that if I have not been working or following in the footsteps of those who came before me. So in retrospect, this whole bill to be about honoring those who came before us. I don't think we get enough of that. You know what I mean? Now, I was taught that when we're dealing with elders, there's not that many elders. You know what I'm saying? And the phrase that I got is there's few elders and a lot of old fools. You know, just because you got gray and just because you can speak words or two doesn't mean you an elder. The real eldership comes in the work that you put in. And I don't mean just sitting behind the camera or your social media platform, you know, regurging information that people can get on their own. I'm talking about actually feeding bellies, putting food in, in, in stomachs, you know. Um, Dr. King said, I can teach, I can give you fish, but to teach you how to fish would be more, would be more impactful. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, as we fishing for the minds of our people, and for the minds of this consciousness, we also teaching them how to fish at the same time. You know, it sucks that we got leadership in our community who constantly want our people to be dependents. They say things like, well, don't depend on the white man, depend on me. And they become the white man. You know, so my message to my son is to never become a dependent. I teach my son to be independent. I have the will and the, and the guidance to understand that he can control every destiny, every aspect of his own life. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody can do that for him. You know what I'm saying? But it's also going to take uh, a Sankofa moment for him to understand that. And the Sankofa moments comes with our elders, our ancestors, constantly speaking the name of those who came before us. You know, constantly reiterating the work that they put in. Some of us even, some of us died for the work that we put in. Case in point, uh, um, Stolen Legacy, George G.M. James was said to actually be murdered for the information that he put in that book. Now I know enough to know that white folks don't kill you for telling lies. They kill you for telling truth. 
So anything, anything that our brother have met their demise in, in terms of the work that they put in, we should reach to, reach for that. We should go to that. You know what I'm saying? We should constantly re speak their names because these people are uh, uh, these these sisters and brothers are not dying in vain when they got lion cubs such as ourselves out here. You know what I'm saying? You know, and heroes and sheroes should always be spoke about. You know, we should have monuments of our heroes and sheroes. White people support their heroes and sheroes every day. And you vicariously support their heroes and sheroes every day. Every time we pull out one of these, we see the legacy of them. It becomes so important in our life that we don't even under, we vicariously understand the energy that we put now by putting former slave masters at the head of our our, our notion, the, the the good things that we do for these white people. You see what I'm saying? So in recognizing the value of ourselves, this becomes a tool. You know what I'm saying? This just be this becomes a medium. To not just feed my son, but his friends and his friends and the future friends that he may friend in the future. See, it's not enough to give him the wisdom and have him walk out in these streets confused and not knowing himself. But to give his friends the same wisdom that they both can build upon is really the mission that we should be living by. Um, in the next 20 years... People like my son should be building um, generations of wealth, you know, because with every new, with every new child that's born, we get a chance to actually kill our current situation. But too many of us are caught up in our ways, and we actually miss the beauty of that child being born, uh, miss the beauty of giving that child the information that they need to actually live after they're born you know so I mean this is this is just great you know for me to know this and for me to incorporate this in my life you know what I'm saying lets me know that that book that we read that's called niggas from niggas to God actually has some value to it actually has some facts and I represent um, that personification of from niggas to God and of course a lot of us do because a lot of us been caught up in the same whirlwind of this white supremacist world you know giving us the falsification on who we supposed to be or who we think we need to be you know what I'm saying but when you get this consciousness all I'm saying is now you got responsibility you know what I'm saying and uh, the responsibility goes more than just going out you know what I'm saying talking ish you know what I'm saying? And regurgitate information. You know what I'm saying? They may not less work at this particular time. I mean, all information is needed. You know what I mean? But there should be uh, levels to this. You know what I'm saying? There should be executions of things that we should execute together. You know what I'm saying? Before we get into the, uh, um, the, the verbal judo. You know, one of the things that... Uh, Malcolm X remind us is we should squabble our differences out in the closet and come out with a common front. Well, you know, with things like YouTube, that <laughs> shit is all going and over with now. Ain't no squabble. It's, uh, it's actually uh, beneficial to air out your dirty laundry. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying even for the conscious community, we got to get we got to do better because we act like basketball wives. You know what I'm saying? We act like uh, 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 Atlanta housewives, you know, arguing, bickering about things, you know what I'm saying, that may not be relevant towards this time. You know, I think that we need more tangible things than more philosophy and more um, the more of the, the rhetoric that's coming out. You know, tangible things are, are the things that's going to calm us down to allow us to really listen to the things that we need to listen to 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 transform our current condition you know um i just want to leave with this i want i want to leave with what malcolm taught us you know malcolm said that we are a race of people that have done so much with so little that we are now qualified to do anything with nothing so we should shoot for the moon because even if we miss we're still amongst the stars I want to thank Baba for having me out here. I want to thank, uh, big up my, uh, my Baba Seville. I love you so much. And you know, everything that you do and everything that you have done for us, get my son to Apollo. It's a blessing. You know what I mean? I, 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 I can't, you know, 
you know, Tupac said, uh, uh, there's word, words can't ex explain how I feel, you know what I'm saying? I can't even, um, I can't even find the words to let, a, let me know how much my elders and those who came before me means to me because they are part of my social development. Who I am is a reflection on who they are. So when you see me out there and you see me not right and you recognize that, I welcome the criticism. You know what I'm saying? If, in fact, if it fit right with me, if it suit right with me, I do everything in my chance and, and my uh, ability to change that criticism. I'm not trying to sound like a politician. I'm just trying to sound real. You know what I mean? I think that we need more than that. I think that the black, the conscious community or the black or the whatever title you want to call it needs more um, constructive criticism. We need more constructive criticism in our community. Um, constructive criticism lets us know whether we're doing right or wrong, you know, and if we're uh, mindful enough to internalize this constructive criticism and value it as what it is, I think we'd be better off. I want to say thank you, Baba, for having us out here or having me out here. And I can't wait to do the uh, next interview, you know, in the next couple of months. Black power, peace and love. I just want to add on that that is the most uh, truthfully substantive information that I have heard in quite some time above and beyond all the slick talk and trying to sound smart and all this other stuff this is really the some of the most substantive information that I have ever heard personally I'm speaking for myself in a long time and it's coming from Buffalo you know, a place where uh, giants are made. And that's why I had wanted to conduct the interview here to say that never judge a person by where, never underestimate a person based on where they're from. That's right. Stop the set tripping because greatness when it comes to the original people can come from anywhere on the planet. Do the things that keep us Got to stick on your P's and Q's